Good morning, ladies, and good morning, gentlemen, if it's any in the room. My name is Tanisha Bright, and I want to welcome you to the Breakfast of Champions, hosted by Maryland Denise Coaching Services. We invite you to join us Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. via Zoom. And we want to welcome and thank our YouTube uh, tune in as well. Um, if any of you would like to join us live at any time, visit www.MarylandDeniseServices.com and register to receive information on how to join our calls. Uh, before we get started, um, let's all grab the link that um, we got in the chat box and let's send it to five people in your contact so they can join as well and grab some of these nuggets that we drop in Monday through Friday. Um, so let's get started on a conversation starter. But before we do that, let's um, get tuned in for a little scripture by our host, Miss Felicia Johnson. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the Breath of the Champion. Um, I have a couple of scriptures that I would like to share. And um, it reads, my first one is, 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, and it reads, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love, and what that means to me is faith, hope, and love are the three most important virtues for the pres our present life, but love is the greatest because it will last forever. Love never fails. Unlike spiritual gifts that will cease when Christ returns. So I thought that was a good scripture that came to me. And the second scripture is Mark 11 and 24. And it reads, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you will have received it and it will be yours. And to me, they're saying that the Lord Jesus teaches us that we must have faith in God, no matter what difficulties or setbacks, as long as we pray and rely on him, um, that our hearts would be, I mean, excuse me, that God would fulfill our prayers according to his will. So now I would like to um, say a prayer. And um, if you would just bow your heads. Oh, heavenly and most gracious father, I come to you just saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the many blessings that you have restored upon us, Lord. Lord, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, I just thank you for the use of all of my limbs and all of my senses, Lord. Lord, I just ask you to just teach us how to love one another. In your word, it says, love our neighbor as thyself. Father, we just ask you to take away any negative thoughts and replace them with positive thoughts. Increase our faith, Lord. We love you and we adore you, Lord. We just ask you to protect and cover our families, lead and guide us and direct our path. Lord, I ask that you build me up and build us up where we are all weak, Father. We ask you to forgive us for all of our sins. Father, I ask you, to just say a special prayer for Miss Merlin and Mr. Hall and Lord. Continue to instill wisdom and knowledge in them, Lord. Allow them to both teach the word of God. And I ask, Father, that you cover all of our speakers, leaders, and all of our breakfast of champion ladies, Lord. Lord, I just ask you this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 For those that are uh, just now tuning in, we want to welcome you in for, uh, to the Breakfast of Champions. Um, so feel free to come on in, grab your notepad, uh, your bucket, so you can grab some of these nuggets that's going to be dropped in. If you already missed the other days, hey, you're missing a half a bucket of nuggets, but come on in and we can overflow you by the end of Friday. <laughs> So how are you doing, Miss Felicia? I'm doing good on this Wednesday morning, and I hope that everyone 
is doing good this morning, but this is the day that the Lord has made, and I am happy this morning. I just thank you. Um, <laughs> yesterday was, I mean, when I tell you I was writing and writing, I got in the car on my way to work, and I couldn't write anymore, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to miss something. But anyway, <clears throat> it's always awesome when I tell you that Miss Marilyn and Harlan is a, a good team, and um I'm just gaining a lot of nuggets and information that I'm applying to my life right now. And um, I think they talked about yesterday, like rhythm and flow. Mm -hmm. And uh, you want to start off? You want me to start off talking or what? I'll let you start off, Ms. Felicia. Okay. Um, when... Uh, I don't know if Mr. Hollum said a lot and Ms. Merlin did too, but I'm just gonna just state what uh, I wrote down. Um, he, they was just really talking about when dating, um, it's when you're trying to figure out how you're going to walk together. And that uh, when you also dating, you can't figure, you can't um, worry about what people are going to say, that you both need to find out what builds a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, also, he said that, um, you need to know the person's faith and do they have a relationship with God? When I tell you that really has stood out because he's had, he has mentioned it more than once. And when I was dating back in the day, you know, I don't think I was really looking at that. And that's before I really just uh, gave my life to Christ. And as I, uh, you know, read my Bible and and Mr. Harlan and Maryland teachers, that is so important because um, it really can cause a division in a relationship when you're a different faith, you know. And I know that we've had um, people in our family that were Muslims and then they were Baptists and then Church of God in Christ. And as I remember now, I just sit back and it can cause a lot of division, you know, mm -hmm. in that relationship. So um, I think that's something that's very important that we all need to know and teach us and teach our, our loved ones and our, our children that as well. That is so um, true, Miss Felicia. I know um, it was so many nuggets that was dropped yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, just made me just really think about, you know, when you, you leave home, you know, you leave out of mom and them pockets. Um, that's supposed to be for him to provide and protect for you. But it's, it's so many that we get into these relationships and don't focus on if they have that relationship with God or are they about um, being that man that has to take care of you as well when you coming through. So it's like, mm, you get there. He's like, hey. Hey, we, we got this rent to pay. Hey, I need you to pay a thousand of this and I need you to do this. But it's like, when you, you got with me, you was telling me something else. It mm -hmm. was like, you have to really look at it at the point to where, are they really walking with God or if they just using those words to get with you? Cause you have a lot of men that can be deceiving on using God, especially if you, they know you close to them. Mm -hmm. And so they'll give you that conversation at first, but then when they get you, it's the whole thing switch up. And then, then now you're, you're back at mama's house or you're back in mama and daddy in their own pockets because he misconceived you. So that was something that kind of stuck out uh, to me about that. That's good to mention. That's where that comes in. When uh, Harlem had mentioned that that's when you need to talk. You got to really deep, you got to go deep to get to know that person, you know, right. and that um, we can't change who a person is. And I can say in a relationship, some relationship that I was in, especially my last marriage, I tried to change that person, but it took me several years to find out you can't change anyone that don't want to be changed. And you are so right, Miss Felicia. I did that for 10 years of trying to change someone for the betterment not just for me, for himself, but when it's embedded in them, it's, it's nothing really you can do about it. So I understand that as well. Yeah, because, you know, 
no two people are alike and you come from different uh, backgrounds. And like he had mentioned, you know, some people may have come from maybe abusive family or relationship, mm-hmm. uh, been abandoned, trauma. It's just different situations. And we all have baggage, you know, whether we are dealt with them or we still have, well, they're still with us or embedded in us. It's just depending on how we're able to deal with them or if we got counseling to seek counseling to uh, better uh, handle those situations. But I can say, you know, my opinion, we are a race that really don't really believe in a lot of counseling, what I've seen before. I yeah. hope that uh, we're a lot better with it because I know a lot about uh, Black men would say, well, I don't want people in my business mm-hmm. or tell another man, you know, our business or someone else our business. And they just hold that in. But I think a lot of that comes from the way the person was raised, their values. Right. And um, you just go from generation to generation. But that's when we as parents have to come in and loved ones to just kind of teach our loved ones, you know, what the word says and how how it says in the the book, in the Bible, when you're sick, you have to go to a doc, go seek a doctor or a physician. So that's the same as, you know, with uh, situations, you know, as far as, you know, problems that you may be having. So when I tell you that this has really made me go deep and think about my past relationships. And I want to say this to you all, and I'm being transparent. I shared this with, um, a person that I talked to last night. This is really helping me. I have so many notes. I have a notebook that's full of notes. And I really do think that I am ready to love again. I know maybe last week I said that I don't think I was ready because of, you know, my body scarring and this and that. But I just really been seeking and and doing some fasting. And I really do think that I am ready. And I want to share that, Lord. I didn't I think I was going to say that, but I know that was God just speaking through me. But I, I, I wanted to share that. But uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. And I can honestly, that makes me just sit here and think like, you're ready. And I have, I'm at the point to where I thought I was ready. Mm-hmm. But I'm not. You know, because I see a lot that I still have to fix within myself. Mm -hmm. And I see something like I was trying to do a relationship and trying to stick in there on the word and it it didn't go that way. So yesterday really made me think about it to where, yeah, Tanisha, sit back and continue to work on you because you're not ready. I thought I was ready, but I'm not ready. I'm not ready to jump in the deep end yet. Let me stay Mm -hmm. over here in the kiddie pool (laughs) part. (laughs) Well, God will tell you, I mean, he, he will let you know when yeah. you're ready. I do believe that. Um, and also, uh, Paul have said something that really stood out too. You know, you can't just look at if it's a lady seeking a man or looking at a man. You can't just look at how he's dressing, his smile, you know, mm-hmm. and what he's driving at his job. You know, you have to go deep. And like for a lady, you can't just look at her hair and makeup and way she dresses well. You have to look what's deep in the heart. And uh, I know when I was young, you know, dating when I was in high school, you would look at, oh, he sure is fine. He has a pretty smile, you yeah. know, things like that, pretty teeth, because I'm a teeth person. But yeah, seriously, now you really have to go deeper than that. Yeah, and I can I can say that too, because um, a lot of men and women can put on a whole facade of how their career is and Mm -hmm. you see that everything going good for them they got the car they got the house they have everything but you don't look at it why are they this age and why are they single at this age especially when they're older and then you won't find that out until you start really get to talking to them and really getting in deep and now you're in too deep then you're trying to find a way where you can get out but you don't fell in love with them and so now you feel like, oh, I'm going to be alone. Oh, it's going to hurt. Oh, this right here. But at the end of the day, you got to know when to cut it off. Say, hey, enough is enough. Take that hurt. Go to God. Have him give you that strength to walk back through that whole tunnel again. So it's about paying attention that uh, 
I got over. So it was a lot that I really got it out of was. just missed that <laughs> yet. <laughs> and then another thing that uh, Mr. Holland mentioned is like, if you're going to pursue the relationship and dating, um, like me, I'm a person where I love attention mm-hmm. and I like to go and do different things. So, you know, what if this person has a career or a job where it's really demanding that he works a lot of long hours uh-huh. or, um, you know, he probably have to work like holiday, depending on what his job is. There's something also that you have to think about, you know, do I want to be in this relationship or is he going to give me what to bleed? I'm so sorry, you all. But um, I think that that was very important too that uh, he mentioned. Uh, and it is because my husband uh, had a job where he had a full-time job. But he also worked on cars over the weekend and we would have plans and and I'm ready. I'm like, well, you know about our plans that he would forget, but anyway, I, I I deal with it. But this time around, I just want to just seek God and everything, you all. I just want to yeah. make sure that I'm doing it right. And uh, a lot of things that has been instilled in us from Miss Merlin and Mr. Harlan, I didn't think about those things. That's why I just enjoy being in this room and just, <clears throat> excuse me, really absorbed and and soaking up all of these good nuggets that they are, are giving us. <clears throat> and I could totally agree because even yesterday, um, it was a whole meditation all day at work. And I had a whole uh, training meeting that lasted eight hours. But it was like while I was listening to the meeting, I was sitting there jotting things down of things Tanisha need to change, things Tanisha need to work on uh before anything you know instead of trying to rush back out there in the water so it was good but um yeah I also like when they was talking about the leaving and cleaving mm-hmm. and um I remember when um my son had told me that he was getting ready to move out with his fiance <laughs> <laughs> well it was his girlfriend first and I pouted and I didn't want him to move with her. And uh, he said, well, mom, didn't you and dad do that? And I'm like, well, you right. But when you know better, you do better. But anyway, I got past that fast forward. And um, before he left, you know, he did tell me like a month in advance. Um, He told me that they had a little savings account, that they had saved some money and that they had been looking at a townhouse. But I actually had a deep, deep conversation with him I was trying to just teach him um, some things that I had experienced and that things that I didn't want him to repeat the things that I had gone through. And um, I had it on here where he said there's different steps. But anyway, I get back to it. But I was just trying to teach him, you know, make sure that this is what you both are wanting and that you have talked about it and always put God first in your life. Right. Um, and make good decisions together and ask them, were you sure this is the person, which I already knew that she is, she was because um, they had dated for like four or five years at the time. But anyway, I just tried to instill some godly things in him, reminding him, y'all make, it, make sure you still go to church, which he would go to my our church and then he would visit her church. So there was just some things that I wanted them to continue. And I remember that they would have Bible study over the phone, you know, reading different scriptures and all from the Bible. And mm-hmm. I just told them, whatever you're doing now, just keep it up, you know, just keep yeah. doing those things, you know. And then when they got married, they were, um, I think they lived together six months and then four months later, they were engaged. And then the next year they were married. And then, you know, of course, now they are expecting their first baby, which I am so, so happy for. But I said all that to say is that, uh, you know, they have to um, leave. He left his house for me to cleave to his wife. And Mr. Hall was always saying, he said also that, um, no matter what, but yes, and he had mentioned that someone had said that, you know, this guy said that his mom's always going to be first, but it's our spouse that's first and then our children. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that is very uh, important that uh, you need to know is, is being a, a married couple, you know, who's first. I think someone line is open. I think it's closed now. Okay, it's closed now. 
Um, do you have anything? Does anyone have anything in the chat that you want to read? Huh? Just everybody saying good morning and okay. happy for you. But oh, I see Miss Regina hand up. Come on in, Miss Regina. Good morning, beautiful ladies. How are you? Good, good morning. morning. I'm loving that picture. Oh, yes, that is <laughs> oh, thank pretty. You. Thank you. Man, when I tell you, baby, yesterday was so good. Do y'all not realize we went a whole hour over and didn't even realize yes. it until we were, I'm like, we were, it's, it, I looked up, it was 8.15. Yep, it, was it was so good. I mean, <laughs> it was so good. It was, you know, this is how people talk about parties and comic shows and concerts. Maybe it was off the chain up in this room on yesterday. People just don't understand. So many nuggets were dropped. So many things were said. Um, just hit everything from, from the beginning to the end. You know, like how the parents, you know, got to get you... Um, there's the steps to leaving home, how the parents raise you and get you ready to go out, how, you know, you, you got to let go of your child, your mom and your daddy can't still control you when you get with your significant mm -hmm. other, talking about the steps of leaving, you leave physically, mm -hmm. relationally, emotionally, financially, spiritually, mm -hmm. yeah. you got to remember, you got to remember that, you know, that the spouse comes first. I even had a conversation with with someone, you know, um, they were asking, like some, some of my friends or whatever, they were talking, we were all talking and they was like, you know, whose plate do you fix first? Do you fix like your husband's plate or your kid's plate? And the first, right off the rip, I said, fix my husband's plate first. And then, you know, mm -hmm. I was like, no, I fix my kid's plate. You know, okay, if it's, you know, I went to, we were talking back and forth about, you know, well, if it's a baby, well, if it's a baby, you have to feed the baby anyway, you know, but I mean, um, well, we went on to have deep discussions about it, you know, but why would you mm -hmm. fix this plate first? I said, I mean, that's just what I've always done. You know, the husband's supposed to come first, head of the house, so I fix his plate first. He's the breadwinner, <laughs> you know? Right. And it, even when we go, like when we go places and we 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 go out to eat with different people, you got might get invited over somebody house. Every it's it's a trip. Uh, baby, I'm gonna fix my husband's plate first. I'm fixing his plate. Get his plate. Get his drink to him. Make sure you got everything. Then I'll go fix you know mine or my 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 son. My son's next. My grown son, the one that passed away. He, mommy, you got my plate. I'm like, dang, yeah, I gotta get his plate. <laughs> My my other son plate, my grandbaby's plate. By the time I get my plate, everybody through eating, you yeah. know. So yeah. um, you have to you have to just like put all that into perspective. So that do let me know, you know. My 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 mama raised me right, you know. I kind of know, you know, the steps of what to do. You want to just make sure that you always, you know, put your you know put your husband or spouse first, you know. And and he was talking about also. Where these people spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on on a wedding, and basically be broke. Or I've even, I mean, when I tell you I have been in a wedding where I paid this particular wedding, I have never spent that much money to be in a wedding. My, I used to be in so many weddings. I said, my mama, always a bridesmaid, never a bride, man. And I catch the bouquet at every one. I didn't think I was gonna ever get married i didn't get married until i was 36 years old i, my, I was thinking i was running out of time but um <laughs> you know it's so it's so funny i, I was like i'm always the bridesmaid never the bride you know but these people spend all this money and then i promise you by the end of the reception it, it, it didn't even take a month later at the end of the reception he went to his mama's house and she went to hers. Something had oh jumped my. off. So I promise you, and it's like the most money I had spent to be in a wedding and didn't even last and spent thousands and thousands of dollars and the ink was not even dry on a marriage license. I mean, mm. police got called out. Mm. I mean, it was bad. I mean, so you just, you have to think about that. You got to know when you when you're getting ready to marry somebody that, like you said, you got to think about the good and the bad. You got to think, 
my husband told me too, you know, he, you know, we, cause we have in-depth talks, you know, and in the beginning we talked about everything, you know, when you say you're going to get married, you got to remember that th this is the one person that you're saying. Now put this in perspective. Mm -hmm. When you say that you want to marry me, that means you're only going to be holding yourself only unto me forever, ever, 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 ever. You know, people don't think about right. that. They just caught up in the moment all of, of all the lights, camera, action, smiling, looking beautiful for the moment, right. looking for the moment. They don't think about what you got to put into it and what's got to go on, what's going to go on or the longevity of the relationship. People don't think about that. Um, and, me, and my husband told me from day one, he was like, you know, we had conversations and things. He was like, I'm going to tell you a, a lot of things about a man. He said, one thing about a man, if you get with a man and he's doing something, or he was saying particularly, he said, if, if, I, if, I, if I'm doing something that you don't like and you, or you don't agree with, you're not comfortable with, he said, the first time I do it, you need to say something. He said, mm -hmm. don't allow me to do things and then later on it'd be a problem. He's because then we're going to have a problem. He mm -hmm. said, if it's something that I'm doing or saying or something going on that you don't, that you don't like, he said, you got to say something at first. He said, because that silent approval makes a man think things are okay. So, you know, mm -hmm. you can't, you can't let stuff slide. You know, Hey, if it's, if, if I'm doing this, well, babe, I'm not real comfortable with you doing this. Just say, Hey, say something, you know, and right. we can work on it. You know, we can talk about it. So that was one thing, and I put that, and I even tell, like, my friends, you know, that's meeting somebody, like, me and Todd talk about it all the time, you know, when you meet somebody, I'd be like, yeah, Todd, you know, because baby told me, you know, this, when a man tell you this, you need to listen, you know, if they say something or do something that you don't like, hey, right, it's not that you nagging and fussing and, 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 you know, complaining about it, you know, just, you know, politely let them know, hey, I'm not, I'm not okay with that, you know, don't, don't, don't let them do it. And then, cause later on, it's going to be a problem. You know, and then you got mm -hmm. fights and arguments coming. Well, I've been doing it. You hadn't been saying anything about it. So nip that in the bud, ladies. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you, Ms. Virginia. And you're so right, Thank especially you. about like the, the weddings and stuff. Um, a lot of us go out and spend all this money on these weddings and they don't last long, but you have a lot that can go to the courthouse or have that little church wedding and, be content for years and years. So I look at it as some people might want to gloat on how much they spend for the wedding and have the wedding pictures, but they're not looking at that long, the long haul of the whole relationship because they could be putting on a facade for us and then behind closed doors is something else. So I, I get that on uh, Miss Regina. Um, I see Miss uh, Felicia Lee hand up. Hey, Miss Felicia Lee. Hey, Felicia. Hello. Hello. How are you all this morning? Good. How are you? How are you doing? Good. Okay. Yes. I was like, I was listening to you all uh, share on yesterday. I said they won't even need to ask the audience. It was so many nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> Covered. Yes. But um, I was also, I, one of the comments or thoughts, provoking thoughts that came to my mind Um in light of all that was shared, in light of us even being able to, like you said, Sister Tanisha, assess where we are. Because um, when, when, when there is light, let there be light. When, there, when God illuminates uh, our lives and where we are where, and where we want to be and where he desires us to be and all of that, when you come in contact with people who are ahead of you in the race, um, that's really one of the only ways we're really going to be able to make good judgments. Um, and so that means that if we are around uh, lower living and lower levels of knowledge and understanding and wisdom, mm -hmm. God, God showed me that years ago, I can only help you to the wisdom you have and apply. Mm -hmm. I can only help you to the level of wisdom. And because people think, oh, well, you know, that. I went through that because it was meant to, da, 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 it was meant to teach me. No, if we get wisdom, we don't have to. It, it gives us more options. It's just like making an educated choice, you know, we have more mm -hmm. options. And so 
what God was saying um, on this morning as I was listening to you all speak and it brought me to tears is that he's like, I, I'm saddened for my body in the sense that we, uh, the church, the people of the church have bought into this mentality to stay young. Um, and God is saying, grow old, but gracefully. Mm-hmm. Grow old, you know, and, and, and what he's saying is that we need to up our understanding and our levels and our knowledge because children are dying and the younger mm-hmm. are dying because we don't know. Because mm-hmm. we don't know. <laughs> so so then you know the mistakes is just um generating it's re- we're regurgitating things you know and it, it broke my heart i was like that's so true we we mm-hmm. bought into this world mentality stay young stay young we don't want to grow old and die and guys no grow old and die to yourself self-deny it, it takes and i was thinking about the the five wise and the five foolish and they said, the foolish said, give us some of your oil. Mm-hmm. No, baby, I paid for this. <laughs> right. <laughs> go, go to them that sell it and buy your own. That's what he said. Mm-hmm. That's how God showed me mentorship. He said, go to those who have shops. This is Matthew 25, the 10, ver- 10 version. And go to those who have shops and sales. So when we're on these platforms, when you're in the room with your mentor, when you're in the room with your spiritual midwife, helping you to birth out your destiny, Mm. you definitely, like the daughters of Zelophehad, you're going to know who can be trusted in in a male seed with the inheritance that you come with. Queen Sheba knew she couldn't marry no scoundrel. She knew that. Mm-hmm. she knew that she that's why she went to Solomon oh my god let's see what he know because I'm already wise I already got all this good I'm bringing him a gift but she just she, she didn't know the half of the half she came in <laughs> and said, oh my god all this you got it, it means because the wisdom of God did that for him it wasn't because of him and so the wisdom of God growing old old men would see visions and young men would dream dreams you know, mm-hmm. we need to grow old. He said, ask the elders, see what they have learned. Won't they share it with you? Mm-hmm. And that's one of the issues is that that's why that multi-generational platforms are needed. You know, the visitation, visit your grandmother, visit your grandfather. And I'm not talking about naturally only. I'm not talking about biologically only. I'm talking about spiritually. Mm-hmm. Because they got a word for me. That that's that's yes. that's that's somebody right there have a word just for me because they it's a it's a reckon uh it's a recognition in the spirit that this daughter need the wisdom that I bought. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so I was like, God, help us. I just went into tears. I just went into tears. He said, grow old, but grow old gracefully and and get rid of this mindset of staying young because the young need us. Yes. So we can't all be the same age. We can't. Yeah. So blessings. <laughs> Sorrows and tears. <laughs> that was deep. Yes, was you were. I was thinking that too. <laughs> oh, we. Y'all, y'all, I gotta jump in on that one. I didn't know my mic was open. No. But y'all remember, <laughs> y'all remember on Queen uh, Charlotte. It was, she said, sorrows and tears. So, yes. you know, sor- mm-hmm. <laughs> sorrows and pain and sorrows and pain. <laughs> anyway, y'all go on. <laughs> Ooh, oh, Felicia, when I tell you, mm, you made me want to get up over here and do a little shouting. <laughs> that was so, so deep. That was so good. And everything you said was so true. And you are so right about you know, we have to dig deep and go to our, like our, our had grandparents. And I remember when I would sit and I would just talk to my grandmother and she would just feed me with so much, she had so much wisdom, you know, and I would kind of 
take notes and write things down and looking out, you know, uh, family albums. And she was a grandmother where if you talk to her or she give you a birthday card, she always wrote down the generations, fourth generation, third generation, first generation. But she wrote all of that on your birthday cards. And I thought that was so good. But anyway, I, I thank you. I, I thank you. I thank you, Miss Felicia Lee. Yes, Miss Felicia. And even when Miss Felicia Lee said, um, grow old and you got to leave that young mind. It is so many people that don't understand that uh, just because you change an age and grow older, you have to leave that, that young mind um, back where it's supposed to be back in your teens and 20s and 30 and grow wiser with it. So that was something that really um, stuck out to me. Uh, I see the uh, chat box is booming. Miss uh, <laughs> Robin Boone, I went back up to her. She said, yes, I'm single, but I always fix my dad's place first at family activities. Why parents are divorced, but they uh, both attend everything my mom always likes. Be sure to fix your dad's place first so I honor my dad and his position in the family no matter what. And she said, of course, when I marry, I'll, um, I can't, my deal don't got stuck. She'll fix her husband's plate first. Um, everybody's saying, come on to Bible study. Yes, that was a, a good old Bible study. We got <laughs> real quick. And um, Voice of Change said, grits and eggs this morning. <laughs> and Miss Regina, yes, the wisdom is unmatched. And then Miss Robin Boone said, we can't escape as the word tells the older women to teach the younger. Agreed. I see it. Yes. Yes. And see who else said something. Uh, voice change said again, and that's how she was in the restaurant. Had uh, me about to shot up in there. <laughs> so I'm Felicia Lee. Oh, it was good, good. Um, I'm meditating in there right now, Miss Felicia. That was uh, that was good. <laughs> yes. Okay. One other thing I want to mention that uh, stood out with me yesterday is when Miss Marilyn talked about understanding the rhythm of the Word of God. Um, you have to understand the covenant. I don't, and when she talked about Genesis 2, 22 to 24. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that if I can read it, uh, I want to share that. And I guess after that, we can just move on. Uh, then the Lord made a woman from the rib out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, this is how bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, she should be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. Oh, that yeah. right there is so, so very, very important. So I just wanted to share that. Um, yeah. And when I was talking earlier, uh, I was just saying, uh, I couldn't remember what it was, but I found it in my notes. And I, it's about, uh, you know, the leading Cleveland poet is saying, we as parents, you have to, um, you have to get the child ready physically, emotionally, and financially, and spiritually. And that you have to teach them how to lead, provide, and love. And that's that just good. very, very important. Yes. That was real good. So, um, at the time, if uh, <clears throat> our speakers are ready, I believe Miss Joycelyn and Miss Charday is going to continue to talk about our hands on deck, but I believe their title is Understanding the Flow. Mm -hmm. So if no one else have any more uh, questions at this time, I, and if they're ready, we are ready to welcome them. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Look at Queen. I'm liking that hair and it head. Okay. Y'all know I come with the switch up at least every two weeks. <laughs> Hi, Miss Charday. Hi, Miss Marilla. Good morning, Queen. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to ask Miss Felicia, Miss Felicia Lee, to join in with us as well this morning. Felicia, you're ready. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. There we are. Don't they look beautiful? Yeah, but y'all coming. Oh, oh, you oh, make oh. me proud over here. Yes. <laughs> they are coming with it this morning. <laughs> Amen. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and take it from here. I want to say good morning to everyone and happy, happy Wednesday. Uh, happy hump day. Happy 
a live day, happy every day. You know, I just thank God for, you know, what he is doing in this season in all of our lives. And I pray that you guys are, you know, really grabbing hold and catching the rhythm of life. Because, man, when I tell you, our God is up to some stuff. I was listening to the ladies this morning. And I said, Lord, listen at your daughters. They over here catching the rhythm. <laughs> they are catching the rhythm of what you're doing and, you know, how you want to bless them. And, you know, even if they don't see it right now, they know that, they, they know that it's still coming, it's still happening. And I said, and then they husbands got the nerve to be joining in with them. And <laughs> I'm so excited. We got a chance to uh, meet Mr. Mac uh, Davis last night, Miss <laughs> Joyce Lynn's husband. Y'all, we need him in the room. <laughs> oh my gosh, he is ready for it. I'm just like, we, yeah, we need to have him in the room. He looked like he is full of energy over there. So we can't, we can't wait to meet him on Saturday and just create a, you know, just a great family. Uh, well, I want to take out the time to say good morning, Mrs. Charday Lister, all the way in. Where are you located at? It is where. The, tell me again where you're located at, Charday. I get it wrong every time. It's in it's inner Texas. Where is it at? Center Texas. In Center Texas. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Got it. Yes, ma'am. Amen. And then we have our sister, Mrs. Felicia Lee, all the way from Florida, Orlando, Florida. And then we have Mrs. Jocelyn Davis uh, from the Tyler area. And then myself, I'm here located in Dallas, in Grand Prairie. Now, listen, long time ago, we'd have to be flying in and, girl, you got your ticket, you got your hotel, all that kind of stuff. And Lord, when I tell you, I thank God for Zoom that allows us to come into spaces like this and we can go all over the world. If you want to go to Timbuktu and bring somebody into Zoom, they can be here as if they're right there in your home. So I'm so grateful for technology and I'm so grateful for the camaraderie of, you know, hearts and minds coming together. And, you know, God just, you know, Shelly says all my answered prayers in this room. Yeah, answering all of our prayers. And uh, y'all have really answered mine because it has been a, it's been a long time dream of mine uh, to come back into company with y'all. Y'all are where I started at. And uh, with the baby, y'all were babies in my mind. I didn't see all of y'all, but y'all were babies at that time. And just to see y'all as, as adults, Y'all are not the same people, but y'all are representing the same class of people. And some of y'all wasn't even born. Y'all don't think Joyce Lynn was born just yet. No. But, you know, many of y'all, <laughs> oh my God, I was listening to Tangela yesterday and uh, I can't remember if it was in here or it was in our uh, meeting call on Sunday and Tangela said, I met Miss Marilyn when I was 12 years old. I was like, what? Wow. <laughs> Well, Felicia probably the same thing. She probably wasn't no more than about 12. <laughs> and to think that I still got the ear of y'all. When I tell you that blesses my soul and blesses my heart. And uh, it just it just does me well. And then also, you know, my children to know that out of all the years, I still got their ear. They still enjoy listening to their mother. Uh, y'all, my daughter came online last night with the... Uh, with the panel, with the panelists, at first she came straight out to bad tan. I don't join my mama's program. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I don't join my mama's program. Cause y'all know how it is. You been in church all of your life. As soon as we got off the phone, mama. <laughs> I'm like, girl, I don't know what smoke you blowing over there. You know you in love with God. <laughs> <laughs> You remind, I ain't saying this what she does. I said, you remind me that stone God in love with a stripper girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miss Rail is too funny. But I am so grateful. I don't care how God go out there and get them. They can you can live, you can try to run, but you can't hide. <laughs> to mark on you. You got to sit on you as a child of God. Don't nobody want you but us. <laughs> Nobody can handle you but us, but God. So, you know, you can run, but you can't hide. And I just thank God for it. That's what you all mean to me. I said, Lord, sometimes they be over there hiding. And sometimes they all like all that church stuff and all that. Then when trouble come in, 
You know, you, you want to run to the church stuff at that particular time. Yeah, anyway, I'm on my soapbox this morning. I want to stop. <laughs> so we can get started with this part. Uh, but ladies, it is an honor to have y'all in, in the house. But I tell you, yesterday, Mr. Harlan Bell had me laughing. So we, we touched that man's vein yesterday, talking about relationships. And I listened to all of the um, comments that you guys had. And and it really is, he is, he is a joy to work with. And all of y'all, you know, are such a joy. I love to hear what God is doing through each one of y'all. And I pray that you guys will fall in love with him his ways, um, you know, his love towards you, because he really does have an ultimate plan. And you won't find out what it is if you don't stick around, you know, so, but anyway, this morning, we're going to talk about understanding the flow. It's all about all hands on deck, you know, you can't be missing in action and, you know, Lord, this and that, but I want to go back. We've been using that scripture in, um, in Judges 7. Uh, for those of you that have been a part of the calls, uh, Judges 7 deals with the Gideonite, I mean, Gideon's army. And uh, uh, they are battling with the um, uh, Midianites. And it looks like it's a big fight going out, going to be a big fight. They got 135,000 soldiers that's coming in to fight this little old group over here. They already less than the, listen, they ain't even a third of it. Because it's what, like 32,000 of them, that would have been enough to turn somebody around and say, that's all right, there's too many of them. They like ants over here, you know? And, uh, and then the Lord comes in. Here your God come in and say, you still got too many. And we're thinking, God, can't you see they already got a big army? Lord, can't you tell I'm already scared? You know, and the Lord say, with me, you don't have to be scared of anything. Send some of them folks you got home. I can't even see you because you over here worried about trying to take care of everybody else. I need to know how you doing. I, I need to be able to speak directly to you. I need you send some of them home. And if you don't know how or, or and you know, when he made the plea, what he said, 22,000 went. You like say what? You got this many scary people hanging around you. And then he goes on to say, you still got too many, Gideon. That's too many of them, you know, because you still worried about everybody. Let me break this down. And then as you give everybody uh, their assignments, they can stay in their particular lane. They can cover the corners to see when it's too many of y'all, they see y'all. But when you small in numbers, they don't know when you're coming. And that's sometimes how it has to be in our lives. You know, when you understand how God operates, understanding the flow of it, little can mean much. And then he said, if you don't know which, because by this time I can imagine Gideon is a little afraid. He said, if you can't determine which ones are supposed to stay and which ones are supposed to go, let me do it for you. Yeah, let the wheat and the tear grow up together. And he said, those that, that um, you know, lap, that put their heads down, they get down on their knees and they begin to start lapping like a dog like that. They got their head down. You know, they still worried, Lord, how are we going to win this fight? You know, do we have the money to do what we need to do? All that, he sent them to the house. They ain't focused. They ain't here. They, they, they ain't ready for this. He's with those that lap like a dog. They can drink water and keep their eyes focused on what's going on around. Because the Bible said you better watch, fight, and pray. Those are the ones you need to keep in because they ain't never scared. They looking for a fight. You coming up after me? You coming against my God? We're not doing that. So that's what we're talking about this morning, understanding the flow and the rhythm of God. Everything that you're going to need, he said, everything that pertain to life and godliness, I promise you it's already down on the inside of you. So we're going to talk a little bit. We went from relationships with husbands and wives and, you know, desiring to be in a relationship. Well, we need to understand the flow of the family. You know, uh, many of you, all three of you ladies have your own businesses. Uh, you guys are having to be mothers in the home. Uh, Y'all are having to, um, um, you know, boss up in a whole lot of areas, making decisions. Uh, 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 some single, having to make some decisions, having to deal with life and still run your business at the same time. And I got to make sure that I put things in order the way that they're supposed to be. Not try to jump the hoop, not try to get ahead of God, but to understand what his order is first. 
we're going to love the Lord first. That's who's first in our lives. If you're married, we're going to put this husband and wife under here. And then we're going to put these children. These businesses that we have, those are some gifts that God has given to us as a means to survive or to provide for your family. But it's all about order. If you're single, it's the same thing. You still have to put God first. You make room for your mate, but you need to occupy until he comes. You need to stay in your position, whether it just be a woman of God, whether it be a mother, whether it be your business, and you got to make room for them to come into your life, but make sure that you continue to please God and all of your deal. And that's what he says, the married people, they care for the things of their spouses. But when you are single, you are to care for the things of God. And when you stay in your particular lane and you understand the flow of how God moved, do you know you can go and ask your father for anything? For any, absolutely anything. So let's start right there. Uh, we're going to talk about that. How many times have y'all found yourselves just kind of like, you know, it, like, Lord, I don't know if we coming or going. Are we supposed to be moving forward or backwards? You know, God, is this, is it me? Is it my husband? Is it these cheering? <laughs> you know, what is it? Because something ain't right about this flow here. And then the Lord begins to start sharing with you no sis, no daughter, your life is out of order. And I need you to understand the flow and the rhythm that I have for your life. So we're going to take each one of you, each whichever one want to pop up first and go, because I know y'all ready to talk this morning. So whichever one wants to go first, we're ready to share. Who ready to go? Oh. All right. Well, I guess I will go ahead and kind of, I'll start off with Miss Felicia. Um, you know, Felicia, I know we talk about this a lot. You know, I was listening to you this morning. And um, one thing that I, I have learned about you is that um, order has been established in your home early in life, you know, just from being raised with your parents. And that was something that had to be honored. There was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And uh, sometimes it can get a little, you know, I don't know, I don't want to do all that, but somewhere along the way, you start realizing that that flow was necessary. Uh, can you kind of talk about that a little bit, you know, um, maybe the under, maybe the importance of making sure to, to understand the flow of God and what he's, what he's doing and what he's trying to do in our lives? <laughs> um, good question. Um, in my rearing and in my raising, um, one of the things I was able to note as I grew up um, were things that were true and things that were, you made that up, you know, and um, because my house was divided Baptist and Church of God in Christ, but my mom and dad, my dad was very, um, he was very much a guide. So him and my mom still was unified in, in the house on the household things, you know, that she followed, she, cause they can't, she came from that generation, you know, of just being submissive and stuff. And so, um, so I ended up getting educated about <clears throat> some of the things um, that I wasn't planning on being educated about. Like, you know, my, my dad, my mom tried to make me go to school in dresses when I started school because her newfound faith in Church of Christ. And I came home one day and she tried to put me on. I said, uh-uh, uh-uh, I got to go to PE. <laughs> you got to get me out of these patent leather shoes in this dress. That's not going to work. And I stood there flat-footed and said that to her with my dad behind me. And something in me knew that my dad backed what I said. And so there, my voice was established. I, I knew then I had a voice and I knew that that was not right. And so as I got older, I just started hearing things, you know, well, this is what you do. This is what you do. And I just would have conversations on the inside saying, no, that's not right. That's not right. So pushing that into now and into my own home and into, uh, you know, kingdom, it, it, you really have to employ those same mindsets is that, okay, it is right for us to have an inheritance. It is right for us to build wealth. It is right. So you should start understanding the order, but you also understand what you just said, Dr. Marilyn, um, is that I can ask. What I don't have, 
I can ask. It's the order of the kingdom to establish a covenant with us. So he wants to give us power to produce wealth. And, and that wealth is whole. It's a whole thing. It's a circumference thing. It's not just one area. So when you when you said that, you know, about the home, it's everything. Like each room, the people who live in it, when you go out, you know, how you represent, et cetera, bringing your kids and involving your kids um, because you entrepreneurs, people who have generationally blessed families train their children in what they do. They don't say, oh, well, Johnny, you gonna figure it out. No, Johnny get in his office and go, start filing them papers. <laughs> <laughs> they bring them in. And so all of that, understanding that order that your kids too are a part of your business. Um, they are part of, just like they're part of your house. They're part of your business. So it's some type of skill. I don't care if it's, I'm gonna show you how to work a calendar, a planner. You're going to do something to transfer those skills. Yeah, and mindset. You know what, uh, you uh, man, I tell you, you reminded me of so much. Um, I love the way you started that out about, you know, um, how your household was, you know, because everybody comes from a different background. And when we're raised up with two conflicting views, I think they had the same foundation, but sometimes the way we go about doing things is so different. And it, it, it pays to have a mother and a father in the home that will understand one side of the other. Cause I'm quite sure where dad understood some things that what mom was saying, you know, that that may not have been um, all necessary. The same thing, there were things that dad was sharing and mom may have said that may not be all necessary, but we are one team and we have to learn how to work these things out together. What we don't want to do is bring conflict in the home to where we conflict in front of the children. And then because I'm telling them kids, they, they crafty. When they find out mom and daddy fussing, they gonna see who won that fight. <laughs> but when I find out who won that fight, when I want them cookies next time, I ain't going to the loser. I'm going to that one that won that fight over there. <laughs> Simple thing, that's how it all starts. And so we have to make sure that we govern ourselves. But Felicia said, just hearing uh, those sounds, and she noticed there was there, there's a there's a spiritual awakening taking place within her, you know, to realize that it ain't about the dress, it's not about the about the shoes, it's not about the look of a thing. You know, this is reality. I got to get them to go to PE, and I can't wear no dress to PE. I need some shorts, mom. You know, and we're having to live in a real world. We can't be in church 24 hours a day. You know, I understand you're trying to place a foundation within me, but we can't be in church all day long. We, we have to find a good flow to this thing because, you know, I got peers. You know, this, this is how a lot of time kids get picked on, you know, because they don't really know how to mesh and flow with society, you know, because we have bubbled them in you know, with the church. And, I, and, and I, I think in the long run that it pays off, but it needs to pay off while we're in it too, because the kids are having to do life with us, you know. And then Felicia talked about how the kids got to be a part of your house and your business, you know. I mean, everybody got to come in here and find your part, you know. You don't get, just get to sit and you not do anything. And I thought about when my, um, when my children were growing up, we had to play a part of everything together. I, I don't think we thought about it. I just think we just do it had to get done. You know, on Saturdays, though, there is no such thing as mom out there mowing that yard. When I tell you no such thing, not as long as there was a Demarcus out on a mod there. I'm not touching no lawn more. Can I touch one? I can, and I love doing the yard, but I'm not fixing to sit. I'm not fixing to let y'all sit up in this house. And I'm out there morning. You my kids used to hate it. Eight o'clock. I got this from my family though. Eight o'clock every Saturday, everybody up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> y'all, I still do that now. Some of y'all probably know. Miss Brown get up early. That's where that stuff come from. Some kids had to be out there getting at it. This house needs to be cleaned up. The yard needs to be done. Then y'all can play later on. You know, get catch the rhythm. Get you understand the flow. I'm not trying to stop you from getting th doing things, but I'm also trying to teach you some principles about responsibility and sharing loads. You can't just put that all off on one person 
Um, so Ms. Joycelyn, what, what are your thoughts around that understanding that flow and, you know, some things don't always make sense, but, you know, we got to do what we got to do. I'm finally just finding a flow and I never <laughs> knew that I never ha not had one. Um, but I like where I'm at right now. There is a, a sense of peace in the flow that I do like, especially with putting God first. Now, what I didn't uh, realize before is that um, the order that it was supposed to, of course, you know that God comes first or whatever, but when it came to like kids and spouse and business, I always thought, well, if I want my business to be successful, then I'm going to have to put the extra time and, you know, I figure out a way to, you know, make dinner when I'm supposed to, I must set a schedule when I'm supposed to do dinner only on certain days. And I'm like, I don't think that's how that's supposed to work. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then just back off what uh, Miss Felicia said a while ago, I never thought about how I was going to incorporate my kid into my business. So I think that's something that I have to uh, think about, you know, when he gets a little older. Although I wouldn't trust him earning my clothes, you know, probably around four or five, but maybe I can have him, you know, help me pack my car up, you know, if I have a photo shoot or, um, you know, just put stuff in order. So that was a really good, um, I guess, feature advice for me. Yeah, that's good, Justin. Like you said, um, you know, sometimes that's not where we come from to think about that we're leaving inheritance and the inheritance is not just money. Uh, the inheritance, inheritance is even just teaching them how to manage life, you mm -hmm. know, how to be in a relationship, you know, how to be forward thinking, not thinking for them all the time. And I think it's something that has to be brought up, you know, in our, in our circles of influence, uh, because it really does make you go back and kind of think about like Jocelyn said, I don't even think I had an order, you know? I didn't, yeah. But now what I am sensing is that now that I'm getting an order, now my husband can get an order. Like it could be a trickle effect now because he's definitely not the most ordered person I've ever <laughs> met. <laughs> but I do know whenever I put myself in a position, uh, it's kind of like you said, that influence. He's like, oh, well, it's working for her. You know, let me try it out. You know, let mm -hmm. me get up early. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I agree with you on that part. You know, jo Joyce, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, it made me proud. Uh, it's obvious that your husband talks to DeMarcus. Yes. <laughs> yes. And yeah. And DeMar DeMar your husband must be really proud of you because he made mention of it. He said, my wife is being mentored by your mom. Um, and I was like, oh, my God. I yes, said, he told yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's pretty cool. And then... When you can get the guys on board and then it, it's it's really um, uh, good to understand that even though, say, for instance, you know, we don't always marry like, um, you know, my husband does all this and he's supposed to be doing all this. You know, we don't always know that's what we're supposed to be marrying. And mm -hmm. then but we marry somebody that has a heart of with a big old heart with love. And it's like, well, wherever you go, that's where I'm going, you yeah. know, and whatever's working for you, I'm going to do it too. You know, that to me is, um, um, you know, I tell you understanding the flow. It's not about who's first. It's about what works. Mm -hmm. And if it's working for one, let's get on board. And if we got to get, you know, our son, our daughters to get on board with it, let us catch the rhythm first. And then when we find how this is important and how we did not have these things growing up, we start off early with those kids yeah. so that now, you know, you can have a better chance at, you know, being more productive and uh, more uh, fluent in life, you know, to where you don't have all these hiccups and stuff. And when we stop and look, that was like, God, why didn't I know this stuff before? Mm -hmm. We just don't always know. We yeah. just don't always know. Uh, Miss Charday, how about you over there? Understanding the flow. I know she's got a little bit of delay, so y'all just be patient with her. But uh, how, how, tell us your thoughts around that, especially with your home. Okay, yes. Sorry, I have a delay. 
lame, but uh, they're supposed to be coming fixing my internet. But uh, I would say um, consistency and allowing God to uh, redirect, refocus, and restore you because. I'm also, I'm like, um, Jocelyn, I didn't have a, uh, it was no structure there. When I first started my business, I'm just, you know, God gave me the vision and I'm like, okay, God, well, where do you want me to go with this? And once he, allowed, once he told me where he wanted me to go with it and um, I started to begin to understand the flow. So I just started going with his direction. And yes, I would just definitely say you need discipline um, in structuring your home. And it starts with your home. I would also remember, Miss Marilyn, when you would say, you know, declutter, you know, you can't you can't focus with you when your household, you know, when you have a lot of clutter in your home. So I would say starting there, um, decluttering your mind, decluttering your space. Um, journaling and once I began to do those things and I started to implement those things into my life I saw a big change in not only my business but in my relationships not only with my marriage and my children but with my relationships with others as well so um, I would just say allowing God to redirect you refocus you and then re to restore you so he can restore you whether it's in your business with your relationship with your children your husband, your spouse, anyone, but um, yes, that's not what. Yeah, that's good. Um, I think the first thing is acknowledging, acknowledging that some's off track. You know, it, it's just like you know, your body speaks to you about different things. If you're walking around, y'all fussing all the time. Uh, that was a little something that I sent to Harlan. Uh, we're trying to get ready for uh, Saturday, and y'all, I, I know they're gonna bring it on. But we were talking about the conflict. Y'all did me in Harlem text all day long, <laughs> all day long. And we were talking about the signs of bad communication in relationships. And this is something that causes there to be an imbalance with the flow in the home. And it says bad communication often has a detrimental effect on relationships. So it's so important to learn and recognize the signs. And these may include a partner who doesn't listen or pay attention, a partner who centers the attention back to themselves, or someone who becomes defensive during a conversation. And the, these are some of the things that happen that causes us to start thinking that we've got a real imbalance. And it doesn't just have to be, you know, children. It's anybody that you're doing life with. It could be people on the job. It could be people in your church. It could be um mother, father, any, any kind of people that you're in those spaces with. And these were some of the signs. And, and we'll kind of go into this with our conversations. The signs of bad communication in relationships include, first of all, they don't listen. They um, invalidate your feelings. Um, I was watching this, this movie the other night and the guy was, I mean, you're so sensitive. And she said, well, you need to be sensitive to my sensitivity. I'm not going to fight with you about what you just said, because I am sensitive, but I need you to validate my sensitivity, what's going on. Understand that we are a family. In order for us to function very well in this relationship, in anything that we're doing life together with, you got to understand, okay, well, maybe that's not, you know, you know how it is sometimes one has a strength in an area and the other one is not strong. This is what family is all about, you know? And if you are really, really connected to family properly, this is what puts you in position for marriage and all these other things. Uh, you work these things out. You don't let stuff keep being messed up, toast or toe up in the house, the faucet in the bathroom ain't working right. You got to use the screw, the, the ply to turn the stuff on and off. You know, I remember when we were younger and my dad had it bad living with stuff that would tow up. And uh, my dad had this thing. He used to put these two hot wires to get him on his car to crank up the car. I'm like, that's broke. Fix that. That's too, <laughs> that's too much. Said another one is they interrupt you in conversation as if what you're saying is not important. And we do this to our children also. They offer unsolicited advice yeah, because you're not, you're not understanding this is, is a time for listening. I didn't really ask you for the advice right there. Or they constantly are distracted. 
playing with your phones, different things like that. They use aggressive language. And I know some of y'all identifying with this. That's why the flow ain't moving right in your households and on your jobs and everything else. They use aggressive language. This is one that I saw happening for the first time. They practice stonewalling during conflict. That stonewalling is where, you know, sometimes they can be passively aggressive or they can, whatever you say, or they ignore you. Like you haven't said nothing. They walk past you in the home. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm fine. But they have become desensitized to anything you got to say. And now, now the flow in the household is messed up. Now you bring up something that, hey, we did you call such and such? Why can't you call them? Oh, I just asked a question. So I'm going to back up off of that because I know sometimes we can feel that. So when we talk or when we start hearing those kind of conflicting thoughts that are there, and I heard Sade say that you have to begin to start redirecting the very moment. Um, I think that may have been Regina also that said this morning that her husband told her the moment that you see that there's a problem, say something then. This is where you come in and you redirect, you refocus that energy, and you make it a point to restore that home. We understand the flow. We have to have peace in this household. So let's talk about how difficult that can be when the flow has gotten out of order and you trying to get it back on track or get it on track for the first time, uh, either one of y'all. I definitely wanted to um, um, add on to a piece that was uh, shared here just a second ago. Um, because you're right, when you are stepping into something, um, even like Ms. Chardé was saying, everything needs to come into that alignment. And so, with, for instance, when she was talking about declutter, so everything needs to come into alignment, you know, and um, and God begins to, in seeking him first, reveal those things. But some of it, I have to expose myself to because I, I have a certain mental, intellectual or analytical wiring. So I think a certain way. That's why I have to come into the room so I can think, so other paths can be created that I don't think. I would miss that. That's why there's so much stuff I missed out with my sons um, and doing with them because there were not paths created so that I could say, oh, you know what, let me do this. Oh my God, I just missed a whole generation <laughs> of seeds. So I'm having to sow seeds later and in their adult life because God is still a generational guy. He thinks generationally. So. For instance, if I have an infant or if I have a three-year-old, I'm already, especially as a sole proprietor or as a business owner, I'm already thinking, how will he uh, become employed? You know, you can pay your child, I believe you rec uh, referenced the IRS document, um, up to 12000 a year tax-free. And there are no child labor laws on the children. So if as long as they're your dependents. So that kind of knowledge puts me in a whole nother mindset. So you see, I'm in a wire. So, okay, let's see here. We're going to get you an account. <laughs> We're going to get you an investment account. We're going to start putting up because that's why other people have their kids college paid for is because they start an investment account when they are infant. So if I had started that job for $1, do you understand I would have had money for my child college? If he had decided to do that, if he didn't decide to do that, okay, what else does this account allow? So we have to think generationally because God said, I'm trying to set up covenant. Do y'all understand? I made a promise. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, uh, asked, I made a promise. It had nothing to do with you black or you white or you Hispanic or they, the, the white man really, it had nothing to do with it. God said, I'm coming for covenant. If you're going to believe me as you seek me first, I'm going to add it to you. And so your, your infant can model, your children can model, your children can pay your child to do a job in your house and it's legal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to 1099, you is contracted, sweetheart. And so we have to learn that these things are out here um, so that that same mind 
can get in them. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So I'm in contact with Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus said, I'm going to put my mind in you and in them. But mm. you have to let it flow like you let it flow through the womb. It's kind of like you're giving them food. And so that's one of the things that, you know, we have to bring in order. Because right now, we sending little Johnny to school. They ain't teaching him nothing. They teach, they should open the book and saying, okay, you was a slave for 400 years. Uh, and you got all these people that done all these things that's the same color as you. Uh, people who were, you know, part of society, making stuff move, movements, but they're not, they're not teaching that. So then what I have to do it and entrust the God education and, and into my child and begin to do things differently. So I'm going to start praying about my child, their personality, their mm -hmm. gifts. God, show me their gifts. You don't want, show me, you can ask for their gifts today. Oh, okay. Well, he young. God can reveal today. God revealed when my son was 18 months that he was going to be a great speaker. My, my baby didn't speak to six years old. He didn't start talking until he was six years old. But at 18 months, God said he's going to be a great speaker for me. So God will reveal things about our kids so that we can activate and put plans in place today. What will I do today to make tomorrow the re what God said, <laughs> you know? And so, yeah, so I, I'm definitely with you when you say to bring everything in order, to bring our kids into that mindset. So first I have to kind of recognize, like you said, what is out of order? Yes. What is one things out of order is leaving my child's destiny to another person or to a school district or to, you know, I can't do that. They will be nothing that God said if I do that. They they will go, they'll, no wonder, because why? They around such and such for eight hours a day for 12 years. Add that up, do the math. What you sow, you're going to reap. So I got to begin to sow things into my children. Even when I'm speaking, I'm going to start reading. Get, go get that business book over there. <laughs> go Come get that, that Bible mm -hmm. story book over there. You mm -hmm. got to start sowing into them. There are concepts in there. There are things in there like my, uh, my son, Isaac, my oldest son. As I watch him, if for that three years I was with him, I started reckoning. I said, oh my God, you have like the gift of Esau. Esau was able to savor meat. When I started reading it, I, why? Seeking God first. God, who is this boy? Who is this young man? Who is this king? God was showing me. He said, he's a knight. He's chivalrous. He's at the ministry of chivalry in him. I wouldn't have known that by looking at him. He, he can say, I started recognizing he could savor meat and, and do spices because he started just dreaming up stuff to cook. And I was mm -hmm. like, Oh my God. So God, when God starts speaking to me about it, I start believing it and I start speaking it to him. And I said, you can get you on the mentorship and cooking. So, you know, it's just, just some of the, the, the things I could go on and on. <laughs> oh my God, Felicia, we definitely need to do some talk time on that there, you know, cause that, that's amazing. Uh, you said, first of all, finding out what's out of order. And one of the things that was out of order was leaving your child's uh, fate in the destiny of the school system, you know, when education is who you are. Uh, and then, um, you know, teaching our children about who we are as individuals, because a lot of things that they are teaching uh, in the schools, um, you know, that's, that's a part of our history. I get that. But when are y'all going to talk about the things that we are doing, you know, now? Are you uh, talking about how you know, you know, and, and I'm saying so many things with this. Um, these are the things that make our black children not proud of their heritage. You know, because if all you do is talk about how we were slaves and, you know, this and that, uh, you know what the kids start growing up saying? I ain't finna be no slave, you know, and, and then uh, they even come against the older generation because they, they feel like the older generation was weak. And so they're fighting against something, but they don't know what they're fighting against. And a lot of times it is because those are the schools that y'all put us in. And they taught us a history that I'm not proud of. Who's going to teach me about who I am as a person in business? You know, I wanna be an engineer. You know, I want to be a doc. I want to be, a, I don't see a whole lot of these people that they're teaching. So putting your children's life in the fate of others, that could be something that's out of order in the home. And especially when you start seeing the, you know, the world right now, where there's so much lack of direction, people killing you, killing your kids, the kids killing their parents. And, 
you know, where are we getting this from? Where, where is that disorder coming from? There's just a lack of, lack of, I don't know, uh, a lack of, of genuine love that's there. And then we're leaving it up to the school system to come and teach us how to do this or that. Uh, so Ms. Jocelyn, what about you? What are your thoughts around that? Well, um, yeah, I, I definitely can go into that same boat with Miss Felicia. Um, when she spoke about her child, well, first of all, just being out of order um, yeah. is just something that I have to recognize first. And I guess as I've been on this journey for the past year, I realized if my spirit is not right in that moment, I have to go back and like you say, disconnect, figure out what's going on to reconnect and to get whatever I got going on back on track. And I don't know where I heard this from, but I heard that, um, I guess not as a wife, like you're, you're the house manager. <laughs> So if the house manager is not right, guess what? The floor of the house is not going to be right. And I had trouble with my son last year. And this is when I was going through, uh, I wouldn't say depression, but I had these panic attacks. And we had just put my son in daycare. Uh, he was the only Black kid at that institution. Um, he was delayed in speaking. So we had like all these different things coming our way, stating that we should get him tested for autism. We should uh, get him tested for ADHD. Um, he doesn't hear us when he call, uh, when we call his name. And let me tell y'all that that stuff hold on me like a lot and weighed down on me. It made me feel like a bad parent. So um, once I took a step back and just, tried to gain the confidence we moved him to another daycare somewhere where there was a lot a smaller and um just to see him thrive now it's just I had to to figure out where to go um in that moment with him but like you said Miss Felicia like what what did I have to do you know as a parent uh what can I do now as a parent and not depend on you know, those institutions to help get my kid right. Yeah, yeah, that that's good. Um, I heard Jocelyn, uh, she said something about the house, uh, the wife is the house manager. Mm -hmm. And if the wife is out of order with things, the rest of the house is going to be out of order. I really believe that a lot of times people think it's the man. I don't, I've never thought that. That man normally is that provider and he wants to know that things are moving, you know, smoothly in the household. And ladies, listen, those of you that, you know, um, you know, may come in contact with a man that seems to be a little overbearing or whatever the case may be, um, even if they are overbearing like that, if you would take your, your place in the house as, as, a, as a house manager and bring order to that house, do you know it would call him to come into order too? Because sometimes he's not seen life being done like that to where, you know, maybe a woman really cares for a home and maybe I think that I got to do it. It's, it's just a control factor that you're dealing with. But the key is for you to know something's out of order in this house and my spirit is not right. And, fully, uh, and I love that what you said, Joyce, that's the first thing is to recognize that your spirit is not right at that moment. And sometimes it can bring you to tears. But you got to get in there and get that flow together. Um, you know, I, I look at it. They're diagnosing kids with autism now. They used to diagnose them with ADHD. They, they tried they to don't... pretty much signal that it was both. And then we have him in speech therapy now. He's been in speech therapy since October. He can make sentences now. I think if we just had the pa I had to gain patience not depend on these teachers or that particular school or even the school he's at now to uh, figure out what's wrong with my kid. It's like, I had to do the work with him first and then we can go from there to figure out, you know, if he needs additional help. Yeah, and ladies, I wanna tell y'all this. I don't know if y'all pay attention to this or not. We're still talking about understanding the flow, you know, what may be happening or whatever. Do you know that the way you carry your child has a lot to do with um, uh, their their position when they come out. Mm -hmm. the, way, the way you carry your child, for, for instance, if you were 
uh, very joyful. That's why they always say you ought to sing, you know, uh, you know, singing to the baby all the time, you know, putting yourself in peaceful environments, talking to them. You know, I was seeing some studies a while back that uh, parents that talked to their kids while they were carrying them, the children's vocabulary is very big because they heard it in the womb. You were talking to them. But what if you were going through a very abusive situation uh, that you were silenced? Maybe you were, um, you know, embarrassed or whatever the way you carried, you know how it is. The way you carry your child is going to determine a lot of things that that child goes through in life. And, but we don't know that when we carry in them because, you know, we're, we're not, we're just not in that flow right now. But if you think about it, you can tell that it really was because some of the things that the kids are going through are some of the things that you went through. And how in the world would they know that? How in the world would they know that? Except we taught them that when we were carrying them. Having low self-esteem, not feeling good about yourself. And now we're fighting. The phrase they say, I'm fighting my mamas and my dad is demons. It's the way we carry our children. And it makes you want to start thinking, all right, all right, if that's out of order, we need to change that around. That's not who you are, okay? You know, they're trying to label you. Y'all, I was blessed uh, when, when I worked in Head Start. I just believe I was a doorkeeper there. You will not label these kids. You will not label these children. I'm sorry. They would go around and do these assessments back then, and they would uh, try to determine which children uh, were going to be um, um, that that would succeed. They even determined which one was probably going to die before at an early age. I mean, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. When I tell you that stuff made me so frustrated. And I'm thinking you're supposed to be in the field of education. Your job is to prevent these things from happening when you see someone. Why do you think God showed you that? You just want to pull the statistics out. And so now you put them in classrooms to where that what they call that's that that that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And then you start telling the children that they cannot learn. No, these kids can do anything. If you begin to start speaking the right language, that's why I'm an advocate that when parents begin to start changing their lives, the children will begin to start changing their lives. I have a saying, the one that rocks the cradle rules the world. If you would get in order, you know, open up your mouth and begin to start talking, teaching them that whining is an unacceptable form of communication. We don't, we, that's not the way we talk. You ask for what you want. You don't just go in the refrigerator and take what you want. You ask for what you want, you know? Uh, it's, it's just little behaviors that we go through. And sometimes it does, it causes, all right, things are out of order, you know, and, and it does, it's a hard awakening that we have to have sometimes. It's not all the school system, sometimes it's us as mm -hmm. well. And we just have to wake up in our households, y'all. And I think Felicia said something early about uh, the kingdom part of it. Um, I'm trying to get back up to that. Um, she said, um, I can't find it right. Oh, the uh, setting up covenant. You're setting up covenant in the household. These are God's promises toward us. It doesn't matter even how I carried the child, what I was going through. When I start understanding to get my life in alignment with God, we change any of that around because the blood is what's going to trump this natural blood. The blood of Christ is going to trump it all. That's why I can go and declare that we can have whatever we say. All right, we lacking over here. All right, what do we need to do to pull all of our resources together, pull all of our mind? You are smart. You know, you are courageous. You are triumphant. We got to start changing them words around in the household, first of all. So, Miss Felicia, I'm going to open back up to whichever one of y'all. I think Miss uh her line is messing up. So, we'll let you guys go forward. Yes, definitely wanted to uh, speak into that, too, as well. Um, Sister Joyce, you know, and all of us uh, who are parents, because that is a big, big deal. Um, but one of the things I heard you say is that he already can say sentences. Oh, Jesus, yeah. give God praise right there. <laughs> Every time he gets out of daycare, mommy, I want ice cream. I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, we have popsicles at home. He's like, no, why ice cream? <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. he knows. And it's just like, 
I know they can't have that patience with my baby the way that I can, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, I, I'm trying not to tear up, but yeah. No, no, <laughs> no. It just makes me proud now to be like, you know, he's like, mommy, daddy, or, you know, I want cereal, a uh, spoon. Like I need a spoon with my cereal. I was like, yes. I just never yeah, looked at it, he's definitely intelligent. And that's like what Dr. Marilyn was saying is you speaking that over him mm -hmm. and into him. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it no less than day and night. That's right. If eyes up. I'm finna speak life. Let him hear it. Let him repeat it. Since he can speak, if he if he's willing to repeat it, what have you, you'll, and he'll start saying the same thing. He's going to come into agreement with you mm -hmm. and at night before he goes to sleep. And someone was also saying uh, something on the comments, read him a book. I would also say, read the scriptures. Oh, yes. He loves reading. And yeah. let him hear them because and say, it's talking to you. We have to personalize it. But just a quick uh, testimony. I have a friend that I met back in 2015, 2016, and she had had a, a daughter, but with her and her husband. And, um, and this was her, I guess, her second marriage or relationship. And th the daughter was born autistic. And so went, you know, to the doctor, all this kind of stuff, this and that and the other. And she said, I need you to come into agreement with me concerning my daughter. So we began mm -hmm. to pray. And so one of the things when I went into prayer about that situation, um, God brought me back to Genesis when he created man and his likeness and in his image. And mm -hmm. I said, oh, that's it. <laughs> In his likeness and in his image, you can speak that promise. God, you made my son his name in your likeness and in, in your image. And speech has no, uh, is not a barrier. It's not a weapon that's going to be formed against my son. And just, you know, finding that community of faith, you know, to listen in here and there, podcast, you don't want to be overwhelmed or what have you. And then also um, she began to speak, read to her um, and everything. I said, I checked on her about five, six years later. Because the time flies, you know, we pray, I think we pray probably about that first year and uh, of her formation and stuff. And she said, she is so intelligent, Felicia. You just mm -hmm. don't understand. I said, what? And Brent, I also, there's a doctor, a black male doctor who fought through autism. He's a doctor today. Don't play no games. Yes. So wow. there are testimonies out here. When I'm when I'm having a, a faith place that's hard space for me, I'm fixing to ask God, show me the testimonies of the yes. people who have went through what I'm going through. And it will build your faith. And God will give you strategy, te uh, the technology that you need, the spiritual technology you need, and just those, those nuggets you need to walk that journey out. But it sounds like he's already showing you the, through him speaking oh mom if you just stand in agreement with god i'm coming out yeah. <laughs> i'm coming out so yeah that kingdom part is so uh so real um he said refute every tongue that rises against you in judgment he said this is the heritage of the servants of the mm -hmm. lord that no weapon formed against you will prosper it mm -hmm. is the heritage because legacy is birthed out of the woman and so you had that man and that woman, but but the woman birthed out the legacy because of the home making heart of the home situation. I believe it's Psalms 127, where it talks about the man that fears the Lord, he's blessed and he's happy and his children sit around the table like olive plants. And it says the wife is the heart of the home. Yeah, I love <laughs> I said, what? The wife is the, the heart. He got pumped life through the wife. So we ain't finna play. We can ask for what we want. I want this child to be fluent. I want this child to have no barriers because he's not, this is your testimony. I'm, he finna tell Jesus story. The Jesus version is his portion. Oh, we ain't playing around here. And especially when you have a husband that's going to be in agreement. Ooh, yeah. come out with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that's why I love the Bevere situation because that's one of the things I learned is that I said when that husband and that wife or when that dad and that mom are in agreement so it's not limited to marriage you can be in agreement with someone else especially if those two parents even if they're not together if there's a level of agreement because God showed me that too that my one of my sons the, the one that keep me on my knees he, he, he's like I will do so much salvation if you two agree stop arguing, stop, stop the nonsense Come on, forgive, and get an agreement so, because you can, you're on risk his soul with that disagreement. 
it's, you're going to risk your soul. And I, from that day forward, I said, I hear you, God. And to, to this day, it, it holds him. It holds him, you know. And so getting in order, that was out of order. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was out of order for me to be in this wrestle with his father, you know, mm. and, um, and, and, and God seeing that God's like, no, I'm gonna bless agreement. Y'all get an agreement. So when he's feel, feeling some type of way, cause it is frustrating. It, it's not, we're not going to sit up here and say it's all candy and roses. And we, uh, we own the up every day in our emotions, but my spirit is willing. So we going to do what God said, regardless. And we're going to speak life. And when he's not on that page, I just, I stay in agreement with God. I say, I say, God, you said, God, you said, God said, when we're not faithful, he faithful. Absolutely. (laughs) So I I just, I said, it's a worry free situation, but it's something that has to be persistent and press in. Yes. Yeah. 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 I love that. Felicia, you, you making me dream over here, girl. Let me tell you, it may, when, when you talk about understanding the flow of God, um, that, that has a lot to do with, um, uh, making sure you put kingdom minded people around you because water begins to start flowing outside of you. And I started thinking about even y'all, as y'all are coming into the room here, what we should call this Wednesday night, seg- this Wednesday segment. And it is the heart of a mother, the things that we do, you know, and really talking about who we are as a mom and how we set that order for the household and um, gets, you know, a lot of times we're, we're tending to things that we should not be tending to, you know, how our husband is not doing this. If you marry, right, you don't have to worry about that. Why your husband not doing this or that? So we get that order, first of all, that we marry according to God's plan. And then I can stay in my position as a mom, as a wife, and I can make sure that that household is flourishing over here. I'm going to make sure to encourage my spouse that he can become the best that he can be while he's providing for the household. But my job is to make sure that I raise these children up, one in the fear of the Lord, uh, to admire, you know, um, just life in general. And like you said, to speak life over them, we see things out of order. Um, you know, um, you literally have to call that stuff back in and we can't do that when we are busy all the time. You know, I heard Joyce Lynn say that, and I was so glad you said that Joyce said, even when you were, um, um, fine, trying to set order in your home, not really knowing that it's, you needed it, but thinking about how it needs to be, you know, God, a spouse, the children, but sometimes we can have the kids, spouse, then the business. And then how are we going to go here and cook dinner? How are we going to do all of that? And nothing is going to come into play like it's supposed to until we put the order properly in there. You know, that business comes in, but it's a family business. Yeah. This is something that I want to talk about, too, is that if you bring a, fa- a business into the home, it needs to be a family business. That means we all have something in common with this particular business. So if you're doing something and all it's doing is promoting you and it's not promoting the family, that probably did not come from God. It's yeah. divided. You know, the Bible says a house divided is not going to stand. And if you're saying, well, I got to go over here and pursue my career and, you know, my husband stay at home with the kids, I don't order. You go leave six months, come back. And the husband's supposed to be taking care of the kid out of order. You know, you got to understand the flow of God. You know, we do this together. If if we gonna, if anybody gonna leave, all of us gonna leave. Okay, we're gonna do this together because I still have to do my wife duties. I still have to do my duties as a mom. I still am responsible for raising this child. I don't send them over to grandma's house and tell grandma to raise. No, you make a way. If you accept whatever assignment, you got to figure out how that assignment is going to work for you and your family. Bottom line, you want the Lord to bless this house, you got to put the house in order. It can't be, well, you know, I ain't never been able to do that. That's selfishness talking. I ain't never been able to do anything. Let let me just kind of open up there and let's talk about that. You know, because sometimes that that selfishness can flow through the home and we're thinking that, you know, I just want to pursue my career. 
but you got a child. Nothing wrong with you pursuing the career and you got a spouse. What, what they gonna do, fend for themselves? You know, let, let's kind of talk about that a little bit. Even if it's ministry, it ain't gotta be just no business, but people do this in ministry too. So either one of you guys. Miss Marilyn, what was the question though, as far as? We're, we're looking at bringing the house in order. And, you know, you were talking about, you know, making sure to put God first in that mm -hmm. relationship. And if I decide that, say, for instance, I got a, you know, business deal or whatever, an offer, I got to stop and ask God about how this lines up with my family. You know, is this going to go in the flow of this household? You don't, you're talking about it's hard for me to make a decision. It's hard for you to make a decision when selfishness is there. Yeah. But if you start thinking about the whole family, it makes you start thinking about it. It may not necessarily be a question, maybe just a thought, just a train of thought. When you just hear those kind of things, how does that, how, how does that resonate with you, even as a mom in business right now? Well, now I do consult anytime I get an opportunity. I'm like, hey, you know, I have something. I, you know, what do you feel about this? You know, does it align with our schedule? Will we have somebody to watch quiet? Can we both go, you know? Um, but I'm going to be honest with you. Before, it was just like, I don't, I don't want anybody else to come with me. I'm going to go by myself, you know? And then something ends up happening. And it's because I was acting stank before. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't acting, you know, very Christian-like. But um, just having those eyes now to where I can see, you know, what is selfish, I can kind of take a step back and be like, hey, I know that wasn't right. That was prideful. That was, you know, not very becoming of me so yeah I do everything that I get every opportunity that I have now I do consult it with my husband that's good and and Joyce I, I, I always tell you one of the things that I love about you is your authenticity you know it's like this is where we are I cannot get healed from anything when I don't admit the place that I'm in and mm -hmm. sometimes you know you know that that thing is, I want to kind of talk about that a little bit you know when it comes down to well I, I was just gonna go on my own you know, what, 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 what were you thinking behind that? You know, it's like, okay, he got a daddy. His daddy can take care of him too, you know? So let's yeah. just be honest. What was behind that thought? Oh, I just needed some space. You know, I didn't <laughs> feel like, and you know, just being honest, like, oh, I don't feel like taking quiet with me. I know he's going to scream in public or uh, have an outburst or, you know, oh, he's just, you know, you know, my husband's getting on my nerves. I just need to break away. And it's like, in times that I have done that, I felt guilty afterwards, or I have ended up needing my husband in the long run at that particular event. So um, now it's just making me more aware of, hey, are you going to this event to be spiteful? Are you going, you know, yeah. Yeah, going to have some time alone. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like folk going out. Uh, uh, I've heard people go to Walmart and go stay two or three hours just to have some alone time. <laughs> <laughs> just to go have some alone time. Oh, it was definitely like that right after birth. Okay, I would escape to and not, you know, that codependency that we talked about, like me going to my mom's house uh, whenever I had an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, and it didn't help that we live two minutes away from my mom right now yeah yeah so. yeah that's that's good and 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 i'm 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 enjoying watching you grow joyce through this i, I definitely feel like i'm growing yeah. i told y'all uh, that past that i just feel like the little sister <laughs> but you know what it's it's good to i think that's the position that god has put you in too you you play that role very well as a baby sister and coming in this room, it's like, well, I got a bunch of sisters in here now. I get to learn mm -hmm. different ways. It's kind of like what Felicia said. You get an angle here and an angle there and an angle there. Maybe I just saw one side of it. They were a little biased over here. And I'm real like, girl, you better go pick up your clothes. Your sister ain't going to pick up your clothes for yeah. you. You better go pick up quad. Ain't nobody going to pick up quad yeah. for you. 
you know, yeah. you better ask your husband to come on with you, you know, for somebody else, else asked to go somewhere else. I know, right? <laughs> you know, because we really are living in, in that type of world right now. So, yes. yeah. Miss Felicia, what about you? Yes, um, definitely wanted to add to that piece of when you, when you run a business, one of the things that comes in quickly I believe it comes in pretty quickly, quickly, quicker than slower, is you start recognizing limits. When you have to be all social media, financial, organization, mm -hmm. uh, marketing, you'd be like, look, <laughs> that is a lot. You start recognizing limits. And I believe the limitations uh, create a space where in the heart where you can, you could be some more humble. And you begin to reach out to learn, how can I grow, scale, leverage? What do I need to do? That's and right. so it forces you, in a sense, to look out of yourself, you know, if, if you want to grow, you know, because there are some who they are a business all within themselves because we have levels of gifting. Um, so understanding that vision that God has for that business but always, always asking for the generational or the family view. I have, I have to have it. Why? Because I live with them, and because ministry home is first, first That's ministry. Right. So if home is first ministry, then home is first business ministry as well. So one of the things that I looked at, you know, my son when he was in the military, um, that was what he did. Is um, he was a journalist, so media specialist. And so um, they, you know, traveled and went here and there, did stories. Uh, so he knows a lot about the, the, a lot of things that even that I didn't use at the time or that he was using before I started the business, Adobe, uh, Photoshop. So he knew all these things. Um, and I was like, oh my God. I said, so when we scale into video, I said, I'm gonna need you, you know. But at the same time, I'm putting the seed in his heart. Hey, if you do this, we can do well weddings and you could do the males and you could do the females because when Come i on. first wedding i could only do the female com comfortably and appropriately because you know i have to, i'm a kingdom like, i can't do stuff that's out of order because mm -hmm. you know someone approached me and they said you know you can make 1500 of photoshop you do the lingerie i said well god ain't said nothing about lingerie Come on. <laughs> so keep the 1500 and all the okay. other <laughs> Because that's not what we're doing here. It even goes against the 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 name. The name of it is family. So God was when you said that, it just boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. Yes, God is all about the family. It's a that's family right. affair. If we don't understand it, we better understand it now. It's the household of faith. Well, and I did that, not see that. I think yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding y'all. And I I told Miss Marilyn about this. Like I'm trying to let go. Of, you know, social media makes you really vain. Like, <laughs> I'm so serious. And being an influencer and being a stylist, you just get like one dimensional. And it's really making me think like, is my stylist career over with? No. Is it no. time for a change? My family's not involved with that. So it, now I'm kind of thinking about like, how can I incorporate them? Okay, I'm glad you said that. So when you seek God, he will begin to introduce he the, sure the idea, the shift. You, you don't move unless he move, just like that. Right. So you could spend the first two, three years where you're the main person you could spend the first mm -hmm. it just all depends on what Ms. God Felicia it's 10 years <laughs> I am on my 10th year of this and I am still not where I want to be at so it's just like okay God what is we doing here you know sometimes and I feel you know that's the you question. go back and that is and that's the question, question right there Joy <laughs> that's the question and that's why I do I park my questions like when I do my prayers and my journals if I want a question, I ask sincere questions and I want a sincere answer. What yeah. do I do? How does the fan, and I write it. So I'm not, um, cause our mind move, we moving. Yeah. So I ask a question, forget what I ask God or God can show me something. If I don't write it down, it's gone. So you ask sincere things like, how do I, how do you want me to do this? And one of the things I heard you said too, which I'm, I'm have to be careful of too, because people will even try to put that pressure. Oh, well, that means you got to post a day every day. 
No, yes, as a, as a kingdom. So over that. Yes, and, and, so no. Over. And that's why as a kingdompreneur, I have favor. I don't have to post every day. Mm-hmm. I, in fact, I could come off and come on and then the cry come back. Why? Yeah. Because the favor of God will cause people to come and go, whatever, whatever. He can cause them to leave. And you've been posting every day. And he said, uh, he just shut everybody down. Just stop looking at her. Stop looking at her. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> just to get no attention. To look at. <laughs> <laughs> just to get your attention. So that you can go back to. So it really has to be this thing where he's involved. He's yeah. in front. He's ahead. What is your agenda, God? And, and also making sure that you have some uh, kingdom influencer fashion uh, people in your, somewhere right. in your studying and your viewing. Because I'm not going to tell you that God don't use unsaved billionaires, unsaved millionaires. I, I'm not saying that at all. You know, in fact, anyway, we're not going to get into that. But what I am saying is for mine sake, for mm-hmm. building sake, for heart posture, for so that you won't take on idols and they slide yeah. in your business. You didn't know you got an idol sitting there and you wondering well, why is this scarcity here? Why is what 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 what's going on? Like you said, what's going on? So that's why I say that. Make sure you have that balance of who you're listening to, who whose fountain you're drinking. That's from, right. And mm-hmm. who your models are. There's got to be kingdom uh mom they they are because we're on social media no they are and now i'm just not yeah. finding them yeah and it's like okay god is that the way you want me to go i was like okay well i'll try it. and then this came along and i'm like okay cool but then you get like that you kind of get like that old stuff creeping back in you're like girl yeah. just trust yourself doing that again you know what i'm saying it's like oh well, but you okay. know what you know what joyce <laughs> You know what this this makes me think about uh you're you're in the right vein you're in this place where you're understanding the flow god how are we doing it that's the question to ask yeah. how are we doing this we do this with kingdom in mind my family needs to be involved in this all right i go back and ask the question how is my family involved with it? or is everybody you know kind of doing their own thing you know because i look i look at my family uh my children are business owners and then they work jobs too at the same time but don't none of us work with each other yeah how are we going to really support each other when the market got a play going on here but i got an event going on the same day jessica got a She's got a uh, uh, um, something she's doing, and I got this going on. We got to get these calendars together. <laughs> and a lot of it is, is understanding that we are one. We're not multiple units. We're one unit with many, many branches. But all the branches support one another. So having to sit down and talk about, you know, you think about it, y'all's conversation piece on Saturday is where do we go from here? I think it's the it's it's the right question. Even when Mac was saying, "How do we? What did he say? Up? It's up from here." He was, said, uh, "What did he say last night? Uh, the only way is up because where we at is, right now, it's like we don't have a choice but to go up." That's yeah, that's exactly right. And then what happens is, I think God has captured y'all's ear. I think I think he got you. He got, I don't know how he started in the house because I don't know where that flow came from. But you're getting <laughs> in the flow. And you're bringing order. Sometimes it may feel like, and this is to all of us, it may feel like everything is out of order. Start out with cleaning up. Mm-hmm. And then what uh, Shardy talked about? Start with decluttering. Yeah, I did a post on making room, like literally. And now I'm getting to the point. I'm like, well, Lord, do I need to sell my Louis Vuitton bag? Do I need to sell my <laughs> my cups back like because that's where I am right now as far as like letting that old self go that main part that selfishness with me and but at the end of the day you know I still love fashion but I don't want it to be just that you know what I want you to do Joyce Lynn I want you to write (laughs) it out as you walking out of this blog it out Mm -hmm. make the devil pay for everything Oh yeah, I have, I'm right. I literally, if I don't write every day, it's mostly uh, at least Monday and Friday for sure. 
write in your okay. journal. You may not, you may not post it because some of the stuff you post right away, you may not need to post that. God may have been just talking to you, mm -hmm. but, 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 but write it down because, you know, y'all are excellent with your blogging skill. You ain't trying to prove to nobody that we're trying to figure out what this household needs over here and from right. the household, how we can, you know, go further. And then, so, and then I think what's going to be important in is to sit around other kingdompreneurs to where we start talking about, um, you know, those areas that, you know, how do you keep order in your home? You got ideas. You ain't trying to come up with no ideas. That's why God gave the vision to you. But how do I keep order in my home? You know, y'all ain't cooked dinner in four weeks. You know, <laughs> we've been eating out and I don't, I don't notice I don't blew up about 20 pounds. You know, who in here got some recipes? That's what I want to know. <laughs> who in here, you know, it's about making those right connections. I think those those kingdom influencers and the kingdom influencers are just not in fashion. You're going to need them in a lot of different ways. You need some kingdom influencers on raising children. Mm -hmm. You need some kingdom influences on how do we invest? You know, mm -hmm. uh, you need some great, and I call those lifelines. That those are the lifelines of people. I think we need to bring these people to the table with us because God's not necessarily trying to give you ideas because those ideas come from him, but you got to make room for the ideas to start coming in and start with, and I'm talking to everybody right now, start with the decluttering. You know, Chardet went back to some old sessions that we did when she first came into my program. She said, start, you know, um, uh, often, she said, often I go back and hear from God the first, the first thing is there was no structure. I recognized that there was no structure. I made sure to put God back in his place where he needed to be. And then I started to be cluttering. Your home will tell a whole lot about you. Y'all, I went through, I noticed, oh my God, I could tell I've been going through some stuff, but I never let my room get out of order. Mm -hmm. I hadn't done that in I don't know how long. Cleaning up, I, I, everything got to be, you know, put back in place. It ain't perfect, but it has to have a place. And I noticed in my room that um, I was leaving stuff on the bed. Mm -hmm. You know, my dresser was full again. I was noticing it, but yeah, I was still going on. And, you know, and, and I kept saying, I said, no, something internal is going on with you. And first thing I did, I took my own practices. I went back to God first. I started dealing with, all right, God, somewhere something is trying to block my hearing from you. Sometimes it's called stress or, um, I don't know, you just got to, we got to get this together. No man takes my life. I lay it down. And what we're going to start doing, we're going to start decluttering. See, when I start decluttering my home, it starts decluttering my mind. So I start putting things back in order where they need to be. I need to be connected to the word of God. Y'all, yesterday I came home. Well, let me kind of back up with the house. I took this weekend, well, uh, uh, last weekend when I came home, I started envisioning where is it crowded at? Where is it crowded at in my home? You got all this furniture, you got all this stuff. And I started thinking, God, what can we do? Y'all, I went in, I said, Lord, I don't like dressers in the room when, when the room is not big enough. We got to find a way. So y'all, I went on Amazon. I need to find a bed. They got some dressers up underneath the bed. I don't need them dresses, big old dresses in the room. And then I need to take that nightstand out the room and I'm building it. Y'all, I went on Amazon. I found what I need. I said, Lord, that's just right. And then I'll put a bean bag in the room and I'm gonna make that room a sitting room to where people can go in and just listen to music, decluttering. Then I went in and I said, Lord, let me think about the colors. I thought about that color yellow popping in my mind right now. And I said, Lord, and then how can I put some blue in with it? I said, Lord, just change. Y'all, I went around, went in and changed my whole room. I need to declutter some stuff. Mm -hmm. I need to get your space back, Marilyn. And then change the environment, the relationships that you have in business and with people, you know? And I'm doing that on purpose. I'm trying to figure out like Gideon's army, who's going and who's not. Who's not. I'm trying to figure out who who lapping like a dog and who over here kneeling down over here got the ain't even focused on where they go. We ain't going in the same direction. <laughs> I'm decluttering from it. They don't know I'm decluttering, but I am. Because every time I come around, you are not you are not focused. You and every time I go over your house, you get me unfocused again. I'm having to do all of that, and it's one by one. It ain't personal, but it is personal, mm -hmm. you know. And then while listen, while I'm decluttering my home, 
and one that rocks the cradle, rules the world. I'm gonna go ahead and help declutter these kids home too, whatever's in your mind. I ain't gotta go over there. I just gonna start sending the spirit through prayer. Your mate, you figure out your mates that club mine is cluttered, start with yours first. But the Lord ought to be speaking to you about them if they are a part of your life. Those that are single, you're trying to figure out if this is the mate for you or whatever, declutter your space so that you can hear. And I promise you, the Lord will begin to start speaking to you about them. You shouldn't be over there taking care of affairs for them. They should be over there in their place taking care of what God told them to take care of. And you stay in your space as a potential wife mm -hmm. for the one that's coming towards you. We decluttering everywhere. That means you can't come in with your messiness and I can't come in with my mess. We're going to make sure both our homes are clean. So when we get ready to blend together, we ain't trying to figure out, you know, who bringing what. No, we're getting ready. To get, we don't need that no more. All of that. So it's a lot of changes that are taking place. And then uh, Miss Felicia said, knowledge is going to be key. You got to know what, what you're dealing with. You know, what's out of order. Your finances out of order. Baby, probably ain't no kingdom, ain't no kingdom principles going on with your finances. And if you're not using kingdom principles with it, I'm not, I'm not understanding why you're asking God to keep blessing you with that. You're not on his team. He decluttering us too, whether you know it or not. Mm -hmm. He never throws us away, but he does put you where you say you want to be. If you don't want to be a part of the kingdom, Guess what he's going to put you? He's going to allow you to go back and be wherever you need to be until you make up your mind. I told my daughter something last night when she called. I said, God, I got a way of getting us back, girl. He got a way of softening that heart and getting us back. And if you want the things of God, he's invested too much in you. You can't be over there and trying to get to God. You got to make up your mind. Come on and do it God's way. Y'all, I want to get ready to close on this. I, I woke up this morning. I kept thinking. I said, um, Harlan finna go get our kids. Uh, uh, uh. He's gonna get them kids. Many of them have been looking for male mentors. They need they need that male voice in their ear that will. And he wonders why he got he was raised he's raising girls. You know you have no boys. Nikki was telling me the other day he called her and wanted to come pick up her son. That's that's his first cousin. He don't have any boys. He speaks to girls. That that's that's where he is. And so this thing about men being out of order, he's like, I don't get it. If you start taking care of the business of God, God will take care of your household. And so a lot of things, y'all, I can't wait to where he began to start grabbing their ears. See, that's the prayer. Lord, make my, I think Felicia, you said that at the, it, it was one of the first calls that you came on with this segment, make my child's ear sensitive to the voice of God. Mm -hmm. that, that, that Getting it in order. You ain't got to go over there and fix everything. Your prayers will go do it. Remember, you as a woman, you set the tone. You are the house manager. You set the tone in that household. So if you start decluttering you, I promise you, all that other stuff will begin to start coming into alignment. Healing in the household, you trying to figure out where did it come from? Where, listen, the toaster ain't broke no more. I got a fr air fry in here now. <laughs> You know, God starts blessing y'all with so much, but I leave this with you. I know what God will do when you start getting things right. I think Chick closed with it the other day. She said, when you get to your wealthy place, don't you forget the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. Don't come over here and get all of God's nuggets. And then you go out there, well, I got it now as if you did it on your own. You know you were messed up. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord put his hands on you. And he is going to turn things around. But we got to start and declutter. Get this stuff, get this stuff together, y'all. Get them house. So I'm going to keep on talking to the women. Get up and clean up your house today. Tonight. You ain't got no function to go to. The only function you need to go to is the house cleaning function. Your car. I talk about them Cheeto wraps in that paper. Get in that car. Get them Cheetos out your car. And bring Lil Quad out there to help. Get them out since he put them in there. Yes, I got a little vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Even though he be trying to play around with him, and now I need you to clean up. <laughs> yeah, I need I need you to do that. And every day we're gonna put it in order. That way we ain't gotta worry about coming on camera. I know why y'all ain't on camera. It ain't presentable, Miss Marilyn. Okay, it need to be. Let's get it in order. Amen. Miss Felicia, you have any final words? Or Miss Joycelyn, any final words this morning? Y'all have been such a blessing. Um. <laughs> I figure out I know what God's doing. 
<laughs> you called me in here to talk about fashion and business and it done turns around um, like to talk about him <laughs> to talk about my process and this is like and I'm thinking like <laughs> I've already passed the pruning season you know I did that last year and it's like he's like no ma'am <laughs> you're not done <laughs> you're not done but I'm grateful though Amen. Beautiful. Keep keep walking through. I think God like you look beautiful this morning. I see the Thank glow you. on you. It's always on you, but it's something different this morning, Joyce. Thank you. Uh, keep whatever you're doing. I don't care if it's crying. Keep doing it until you get to your place where God wants you to be in. Amen. Miss Felicia. Amen. Yeah. So the the what you had left us on. That's what I was hearing. Is that the hearing you know, as a entrepreneur, as a, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what role we're in. The main thing is to make sure that his voice is established in what I'm doing, whether it's my mother role, whether it's the kingdompreneur, whether it's the, um, the, the nonprofit founder, whether it's the employee, it doesn't matter. I have to carve out time to where I'm in that place where I'm just question I have a question or I have questions I have things I want to say I have things that I want you to respond to and that's what makes because a lot of times I, I don't know how we really be expecting God to speak to us if we're always talking or if we ask a question and then we go on and try to figure it out that's not how we do you have to actually say I'm not getting up I'm not moving I'm going to meet with the Lord. We're going to bring your coffee, your tea, whatever, do that. But there has to be a carved out time in the business of life. Um, I like to look at it in the principle of a personal Sabbath. Um, that was one of the things I had to implement. Guys, like, don't you work that business seven days a week? And I, I, I am already established with you. You have to have a Sabbath. And that is a principle. So that means that I have to have a time carved out of rest where I do not do customary. That means regular stuff every day because business it will it will because it's an added responsibility it will bleed over into the time that you might have had free and and you're even like oh i'm gonna work on sunday now no you didn't say that when you was working that regular job but and and i'm not <laughs> i'm not saying that you know don't ask me like, to work on saturdays and sundays not, yes but when you get a business you're like well god i gotta work today no wait mm -mm. So what I conviction, found that, conviction. <laughs> I'm telling you, it will. And then because what happens is we'll never catch up with what God's saying. And then the next thing you know, we'll be like, was well, that what he said? Is that what but you but you so caught in the the cycle of oh my God, I gotta and you become spinning like a hamster. And no, no, no. What I have to have that day and that time where I regard God for all that he has done and have that time to say, God, I have some questions. God, I have some questions. And, and, and even when um, Joyce was saying what she was saying, was this it or was this it? When I have that carved out time, I'm going to ask my question. And when, and in the cool of the day, that means on Monday, after I done prayed, you know, did my day, started my day, God could start that answer. It'll just start doing like a do on me. And I'm like, oh my God, where's my pen and paper? I can write <laughs> down what I hear. And that helps you to be established in your answers. So you won't be all over the place. You've got to have somewhere where you Right, it's, it's almost like the concept of write the vision, write what he answered, write what he said, and that way, when that when you get in the rhythm again, you kind of you're not like, what did God say? What God? And he was like, I just answered that question. Oh, I just goodness. answered that question. So are we are we hearing it? Say, God, I hear you. Say that too. That increases your faith in your hearing when you say, God, I hear you, or God, I think you said because it it don't mean that we got to just. Oh, I hear from the Lord. This is clear. Someone's audible. No, we're not <laughs> fool ourselves. We can be like, God, did you say such and such and such? I'm going to write this down and I'm going to keep listening until it becomes clear. And it, God will cause it to settle. God can call somebody to call. You'd be like, girl, did you know? Bum, 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 bum. And you'd be like, 
get off this phone. I'm going to write this down. I got to hang up. Because I got to write this down. Because God is saying, yes, it's me. It's me. And that's what I found. Because if I let God speak to me and I keep going like that, I never capture and never respond to God. I hear you. God, mm. what about you? That's right. And I find that I'll continue to ask that same question and never be settled that he answered. And I'm like, no, I'm mm. not going to be in that kind of relationship. And so God said the same with the Sabbath. Have a personal Sabbath. It doesn't mean that you walk around in a robe um, all day. It just means there's a carved out time that's respectable to God. Even if it's earlier, like you said, getting up early, that's a principle. Before everybody mm. starts pulling on you, it's a carved out time. I don't care if it's a Saturday morning, a Friday night, uh, at midnight. Sometimes people have to get up at midnight when everybody shut down. God, this is my carved out time. I'm coming. Mm. I need you to straighten out declutter me so that when you go on monday you just be like this oh my god i <laughs> love part. it that part. i love it man I, I love the growth that i see you see in you felicia i see that <laughs> i see that 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 girl that god's been calling out a long time it's like she finally arrived lord <laughs> <laughs> so he's finally made it here and uh, i'm so glad to witness this because i have been i've been looking for this for a long time and you probably say the same Ooh. thing about oh miss Marilyn, whenever she get in her place properly <laughs> y'all don't bother me saying that you know because i know over here the clutter some stuff girl hmm. you know make room and ladies that's what we're doing we're making room for other women you know, to come on in here and taste and see that this room is good. We are breakfast of champions, y'all. Every morning we get up, we getting that daily bread and, you know, we're reminding ourselves like Dave, he said early in the morning, well, I get up and I seek the Lord while he may be found. And Lord, he said, I found him in the sanctuary. And that's where we are this morning. We're in the dual. She said, in the cool of the day, I found the Lord in the midst of that. You know, I carved out that time for the Lord to speak to me about stuff and listen to, let me tell you something it better to obey god to deal with the sacrifice you know lord did you say i said that last week i don't know why you took it to this week <laughs> you know so but i just i just thank god for it all you guys are such a blessing you just you just don't know y'all make y'all make life easy for me over here in this side of the world and all i want to do is keep promoting keep supporting uh, keep providing uh, platforms and spaces for y'all to come into and to grow. And I want y'all to make sure and invite your families and friends. And I think Wednesdays are going to be that mommy manure time and, you know, the heart of a mother. And, you know, because we need to talk about some stuff as some mommies and husbands, I mean, wives and, you know, girl, how you keep it all together? You got your hair did, your kids, your kids in order too? I want to know, did you get, did you take little Johnny to the, her, to the, to the barber shop too? While you were getting your hair done, <laughs> are you the only one? We need to we need to talk about that kind of stuff because some people are being kept themselves, but some little cheering ain't being kept on the side, you know. So we got to get in there. But anyway, uh, I want to thank y'all. Y'all, hopefully, Miss Charlie, she says she's working on that internet, and I hope she does because y'all, that girl comes with fire, you know, just like the rest of these girls do. And I know that you know sometimes we got to get some things in order. Um, that internet probably ain't bothered her until now and all of a sudden you know she needs it so we ask God to go in and make provisions make those crooked places straight and you know get her back into the room uh, we're probably going to be adding to this family right here because I can see the Lord doing some things you know and I think y'all need each other and I can't wait to see how God uh, really uh, pours out his spirit you know in this place uh, well, we're going to get ready to close out this morning. We will be back tomorrow. We got them two hot shots. We got that, that, uh, with that, that, uh, John, what they call it? The Sons of Thunder <laughs> coming in tomorrow. Mr. Andrew Finch and Mr. Zach Decker. Y'all be sure to join in with us on tomorrow. I think, let me see what they're talking about tomorrow. Y'all would think I would know this stuff, but I don't always know it. I, when I send that list out, I don't even hardly go back and look at it until it's time. So tomorrow they are going to be talking about, um, uh, um, give me a second, uh, call the rhythm. Does, if anybody know, you can holler it out. Oh, it's all about timing. It's all about time. And I can imagine that's going to be another hot topic of discussion. 
and uh, we can't wait to see them. But we want to thank Miss Joyce Lynn, Mrs. Felicia Lee, and Mrs. Sade Lister for coming in and being a part of this morning's segment. And we just thank God for y'all keep praying. I think God is doing some stuff in this room and uh, even, you know, with the breakfast of champions and how he wants this to continue to keep growing. And I pray that the Lord keep me in this space with him, you know, to where I can help promote and build and uh, create new content on so many different levels. Listen, have you got your ticket for the relational uh, summit this weekend? If you haven't, I don't know what you're waiting on. I don't know what you're waiting on because that room is about to be full. We don't have but one more day to register. And those registrations are coming in the middle of the night. This is the link to go out there and visit it. I'm going to show you guys just one last time. And I'm telling you, you need to get in here and be a part of it so that God can do some great work with you. We got our sister, Ms. Uh, Tanisha Bright, that's joining the panel. Uh, with us. Uh, we're talking about let's do it together. It's a family relationship summit. We got three days, seven hours, and 19, 18, 17 seconds before this event starts. Uh, we have myself, Mr. Harlem Bell, and my daughter, Jessica. Uh, also, Mr. Zach Decker, Mr. Demetri Tafosi, Dr. Marcus Wade. We got a chance to meet with all of them last night, and uh, they are excited. We got Ms. Cameron Mosley, Mr. Andrew Finch, and Mrs. Tanisha Bright. And then also on our singles and couples panel, that's the panel, family panelists where we're having conversations. Uh, let's, let's see, we're doing um, how can I serve, how can we serve one another? And then we're talking about what are we really fighting and fighting about in the home? On our singles panel, singles and couples panels, hearts that beat is one. Mr. Harlan is gonna come in and talk about why are we dating? What is the purpose of that? And Jessica, what are we waiting for? Mr. Harlan Bell, what was I supposed to do? Uh, Miss Tanisha Bryce, you're going to talk about that online service, them tigers and bears out there <laughs> that you're dealing with. And then I'm going to come in and facilitate with our couples uh, to where we're talking about the heart set blending as one. Uh, Mr. Charday and her husband, Decori, are going to talk about teamwork. And then Mr. Mack and Joyce Lynn Davis, they're going to be talking about where do we go from here. And then Marcus Wade, he's going to come in and talk about tapping out. Uh, this is the schedule for the day. We're going to be serving dinner at 2.45 uh, so that we can get started on time. 3.30, we're going to start with the family order. How do we serve one another? What is the temperature in the home? And then we're going to go from there. What are we really fighting about? What's the elephant in the room? Is there an emotional connection or a disconnection? We're going to talk about that Superman syndrome, the boy inside the man. We're also talking about communicating through adversity. And then I never thought, what are the blueprints in love? You know, will I love my baby? Will I love my child the way that God said to love? You know, making sure to put God first. How was I trying to do it? And then we're coming in about why are we dating? Uh, what are we waiting for? We talked about all of that. And I've got a lot of great things, y'all. So be sure to be there. And then we're closing it out for the day. Let's do it together. And we're going to get you guys connected to some place because there's no sense in starting this and you can't find a place to connect to later on. We want to make sure to connect you up with family, uh, people that are really wanting to help you to grow. Mr. Marcus Wade, he has his services that are available because sometimes the household the order is out of place. Mr. Harlan Bell is going to be dealing with the locker, Harlan's locker room, which is a private segment of what they're doing. And then I'm going to be doing uh, what we call our couples, uh, uh, our couples lounge, finally getting that release, a couples lounge. And uh, the couples lounge is to where couples are coming in, just like you guys are talking in the morning time here. We're bringing the couples in the room together so that they can talk with one another. So all of that will be introduced on Saturday. If y'all will click the link right there, you can actually go out and register. For those of you that want to come in virtually, virtual is available. You'll be just like you're in the room with us, but you'll be on the screen, screen as always. And uh, you can go out there and purchase tickets for that. If you do, if you are wanting to attend, and you got to do this today, if you are wanting to attend, and you say, I don't have that kind of money to do that because it does cost to go to these different events. You need to let me know today. And all I'm going to ask you to do, either, even, even right now, if you know you want to attend, you and your husband, okay, because this ministry is blessed, you need to say something today. What they say, a closed mouth, don't get fed. Ms. Marilyn, can I just put a donation, okay? And I don't want you just to come free. 
Some people don't always grab what they need when they just do it for free. But if you need to come and y'all say y'all don't have the money, that's not in y'all budget right now. I need you to put your, I need you to go out to the whatever links and I just need you to make a, make a donation. I don't care what the donation is and I'll get you on the list to be there. Today only, I need your name on there. Tomorrow is the final day to get this done because we only have, we really do only have limited seating in there. But if you want to be there, and you just don't have the money, you need to say something. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to get ready to close out on today. And I just want to say thank you all for being a part of such a great uh, gathering this morning. And I'm going to get off here because I'm going to morning motivation. I ain't been over there in, in a week or so, y'all. But I pray the blessings of God over each one of you. And until we meet again, y'all be so blessed on today. Make sure you take the Lord with you. Make sure you you know, stand up right in all of your dealings in life and know that everywhere you go, that the Lord is fighting your battles for you. And he will never, he has never lost a battle yet in Jesus name. You guys be blessed.